All right, guys. It's Cam here from Afikin Fitness. I hope everyone's well. I'm going to be talking about two things today. It's going to be my surgery and why I went vegan. I hope you enjoy it. All right, guys. So we're talking about my surgery. Um, about 2014 up until 2016, I dealt with abdominal and digestive issues. Um, I went for multiple scans, checks, biopsies, and they couldn't fully understand what the root cause of the pain, what the root cause, oh, wow, wow. They couldn't pinpoint the cause of what the pain, oh my God, yes. Anyways, so they couldn't find what the main issue was. Um, and it was kind of one of them things I just learned to deal with the pain and and left it as that. I just carried on living. Um, I kept dealing with cramps and pain here and there. It would come for maybe one or two days. And then after that, I'd be fine for two, three weeks. And then it would come again and go. And that was just one of the issues I kind of dealt with for, for a while. Um, I competed in 2016 around September time. And great experience, very taxing, um, it had a lot with food manipulation, calories and everything like that, um, and yeah, I don't know if it was a cause for what happened after that, nobody knows, um, but September 2016, after I competed, I fell ill shortly after, and all the pain I was getting for the past two years actually decided to show itself and I had a small bowel volvulus, which for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's basically um, a bowel obstruction. And after that, it can go gangrene and end up with mortality um, or you can die basically in, in other terms. Um, so yeah, that's what happened. Uh, it was a few days after I competed that I kind of just went through this this traumatic experience where everything kind of just went flip side. Um, blink, blink my eyes and I was in hospital, um, screaming in pain, telling me that the surgeons are going to be coming and that they need to operate ASAP or, yeah, it could go horribly wrong. So um, I was told the complications, went through the procedure. I think it was a six-hour surgery. Um yeah, fun experience, great, uh, went through the recovery process, I was in hospital for about four or five days, came out, I think I was out for two, three days, out of hospital that is, two, three days after that, um, I collapsed, sadly, taken back into hospital, um, I developed uh, an infection internally, which they treated with antibiotics, so I stayed in for another five days, after that, I was taken back out, um and yeah yeah that was that was cool I kind of didn't know what was going on it was up and down up and down so crazy but um I was basically told to be consuming white starchy carbs um white rice white bread that sort of stuff um I wasn't told that I couldn't have sugary stuff or anything like that um and what they said was stay away from vegetables and fruit which crazy I know um but yeah that's what they told me to do and in turn I did stay away from those things it was quite tough I was sluggish all the time uh, tired all the time couldn't focus properly I just felt really I don't know I wasn't myself um that could have been down to the whole process that I went through but it was also affecting my energy levels again yes I was recovering and that could be down to you know why I was tired sorry, why I was tired could be down to the surgery um, and the recovery process. But again, the nutritionist the nutritionist had told me to be consuming white starchy carbs, which I think anyone knows after you have a big bowl of rice, um, you're sluggish and tired and whatnot. So fun times. So I went through that process. Um, yeah, I think I went through that for a couple months. So that was September, around October, end of October, beginning of November, I started doing my own research because the inflammation wasn't leaving my body. 
I wasn't healing the way I wanted to. Um, I wasn't able to function the way I wanted to. And that was me taking everything into consideration of the fact I did just have an emergency surgery and it would affect me. They said it would affect me for a year after that. Regardless, I, I was sick of feeling that way and I took to books, I took to reading online, I took to all sorts of things and I basically searched up foods that can heal the body and how the body responds with the right nutrition. Um, again, I conditioned myself to think the way I was consuming food before was healthy for myself. Um, and although I looked healthy, it didn't necessarily mean that I was healthy. So um, I think the whole procedure of, of what I went through, turned the tables, flipped the script. Um, I reevaluated how I saw food and how I consumed my food. And I carried on researching until I got to the point where I decided I wanted to go vegan. I found that everyone and everywhere had stated that this was possibly the best way for me to heal my body. Um, so yeah, beginning of December, I decided to make a transition. I became vegan and within two, three weeks, the inflammation from my body dropped. I wasn't as tired as I was before. Um, again, I was still going through the transition mode. I was still trying to understand what I should be consuming. And long story short, I did overcomplicate things. Uh, you don't need to make it that complicated. To be honest, just remove the animal products and you're vegan. I mean, you still go about your day the same way. Um, but yeah, that in turn, um, going vegan helped me recover, helped me heal, helped me feel better about myself mentally, physically. Um, and I started performing better. I was back in the gym shortly after that, um, feeling like I could do things differently than I was doing before, straight after the surgery. Yes, it can be taken into consideration. It was a l longer period of time for me to heal. But I'm telling you guys, from what I've experienced and what I felt, the minute I transitioned, two, three weeks, I noticed so much difference in my body. Taste buds changed, food cravings changed. Um, and the way I felt changed, I was more mentally focused. I felt physically better. I woke up feeling, feeling good, feeling energized, um, staying hydrated and everything like that. I was just more conscious about natural, healthy foods that help our bodies function. And in turn, my body responded so well with it. So, um, I think that kind of speaks for itself and yeah, I'm living proof that, um, the vegan transition or the vegan lifestyle saved me in a sense. So um, yeah, I'm truly grateful for the vegan vegan lifestyle change. Um, I do recommend more plant-based raw foods. Um, you can be vegan and unhealthy. That's not saying you go vegan and you're like super healthy. No, that's not how it works. Um, there are bad foods. Yes, it does contribute to better treatment of animals because you're not harming them um it does contribute to benefits in the environment and sustainability i'm all for that um people ask me why i transitioned i transitioned for health reasons because i saw that my body wasn't responding well my body wasn't functioning properly uh consuming the, the foods that i was consuming and i think especially because i came out of that surgery i was weak I wasn't functioning properly. Um, my body was still trying to heal, but it wasn't being given the right foods to heal itself. And the minute I, I did my research and I found that the foods that do heal the body are natural foods growing from the ground. And that's life. That's the reality of it. I made the transition and it helped me. It saved me. I never will ever, ever step back into what I was consuming before. It's not for me. Um, and yeah, I think once you go through this process, or if anyone, I don't wish this upon you, but if anyone did go through that process um, and you're trying to find something that will help you heal, I'm not saying it's going to cure you, but think about the transition because it will definitely help your body respond. Um, it will definitely give your body the right nutrients to heal itself. And yeah, everything will be bioavailable. Everything will be absorbed. Everything will be yeah you know i think this is the best way that anyone should be living 
across the world, not just Western society. Um, look at real foods, and I would I definitely think you'll you'll reap the rewards. Um, I had another question, which was saying when I transitioned to veganism, did I have to deal with um, hate or or you know people that didn't understand why I was making the transition? I think I think any decision that's very a very big change. Uh, you, the way that you have to think about it is someone grows up being conditioned to think a certain way and this isn't just about food I'm talking like it could be anything it can be religion it can be whatever and when someone comes into their life or someone that's already in their life and quite close to them says I don't believe that's the right way to live I think immediately they start questioning everything because again that's how their life has begun to function is how their life has been molded um so trying to break that mold is a very hard thing so Yes, I did deal with a lot of a lot of people that were very very close to me, um, not fully understanding and thinking I was crazy. I can't lie. I mean, I think I used to be one of those guys which used to criticize vegans. Um, I used to think they were like hippie ass people that uh, you know lived with fairies and lived in their own bubbles. But you know, I was I was a big 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 meat eater, big. Um, you know, I love my eggs, I love my cheese, all this sort of stuff. And I never thought I could give it up. I used to criticize vegans, like I said. And to be standing here in front of a camera talking about, you know, being vegan and how veganism saved my life, I think is kind of crazy. So um, anything is possible. Honestly, anything is possible. I think being in a in a family where everyone consumes a fairly large amount of animal products and I've managed to influence them to change their their eating styles. My dad's Iranian. I mean, I think if you look at a lot of Iranian dishes, they do implement meat into them, and that can go across any anywhere in any culture, any type of dish that's made in a specific country. I think we've been conditioned to think that we need to be consuming animal products within that food. So um, yeah, I managed I managed to turn the tables and influence a lot of people. I did not do it by, you know, kind of like forcing it down people's throats. Nah, I was quite calm. Um, I wanted to explain things. I was so fascinated by this way of living because I had seen such a big change in myself that I'm the kind of person that wants it for other people, especially people close to me. Um, I want you guys to reap the rewards because I saw it and experienced it firsthand. Um, and I wouldn't be giving this out if I didn't think it was right for people. Again, it's right for the environment as well. I didn't come into this to to save animals or to save the environment. But once I stepped through that door of, of being vegan and not consuming animal products, you start to realize how much damage we are actually doing without fully doing it, if you know what I mean. We're just funding, you know, all, all this sort of stuff that's going on in the world and don't be selfish don't be naive you know um if you don't want to think about you know if you don't think about the people around you think about the next generation because we do have to cater for them where we're carrying on a legacy for the next next generation and the generations after them so yeah i mean you have to take that in, into consideration and be aware of these things again i managed i managed to convince people which questioned me um, you know, to to think about even slow transitions or cutting down on animal products. I'm not saying you need to jump in the deep end like I did. You don't need to. Uh, not everyone is made that way. And again, if you've been conditioned to to think a certain way, it does take gradual steps. It it would be something that you need to, you know, ease your way into it. Because I think the minute you cut something off, I think it can be quite traumatic as well for you. Um, and maybe you have a bad day and you might be like shit I'm going to have this <laughs> so I think yeah take your time ease your way into it it's the best way to go about it that's what everyone I know has been doing even cutting down on animal products and they, they are seeing the benefits and understanding why they should be doing what they're doing um, again I think the, the vegan kind of movement is growing there's a lot more um, information being thrown out there and yeah there's far more understanding 
on what the benefits are and the the good cause for it for the lifestyle change because it's not a dietary change it is a lifestyle change um and yeah i definitely recommend it yes i did receive a fair amount of hate even if it was um quite subtle i did experience it and at some points yes i did feel kind of how do i say yeah i felt kind of kind of like a victim in a sense um it can be tough sometimes but understand why you're doing it like anything else in your life understand why you're doing it stand by it keep going keep trialing it out and i guarantee you if you stick with it for a month or two and do it properly you will see the benefits you will see um the good cause and how your body responds to good food real food that's grown from the ground that's how we're supposed to be consuming um you know our our food it should be grown from the ground um and yeah i mean I'm trying to think what else i mean if you, if you do experience some sort of criticism or hatred i mean and if they're quite aggressive about it as well don't let it make you snap. You got to be quite calm with this sort of thing if you really want it, you know, instill this kind of benefit into someone else, if you know what I mean. You really need to take a step back and, and be calm and spread information. Um, one of the biggest ways that I found impacted people was just making my food look really colorful and bright and visually appealing so then once they see it they want to taste it and make sure that you you make your food taste great because i mean like i said my taste buds changed the minute i transitioned um so everything tastes great to me um all these vegetables and fruits it's just it blows your mind how much variety we have and we go to consuming the same animal products on a daily basis um without fully trying every you know all these other wonderful and crazy foods that grow from the ground that has been given to us um naturally so yeah i mean try and make it as vibrant and colorful and and carry good vibes with it because you know i think like i said it's a lifestyle change i mean you should be carrying good vibes with you regardless of of how you consume food or how you live your life um and that will ultimately rub off onto other people they will see that you know, what you're consuming is, is good and it's, it's colorful, it's bright. You're not forcing it in their face. You're not being aggressive. They won't get defensive and they'll be willing to try it after a while. I mean, you see enough of something on a daily basis that looks good. You're going to be tempted to try it and you're going to be tempted to want to want to do it ultimately. So be calm. And this is that's a message to all vegans as well. Be calm um, no matter how much hatred or aggression that you deal with. Um, I know it can, sometimes you snap, but you really need to take a step back and, and, and be smart about this. Be smart how we're dealing with it because you don't want to force people to build bigger walls um, around it, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my, my kind of surgery, uh, the whole process. I will be doing another video talking about mental health and how that whole process affected me i'll be talking about how veganism impacted my mental health as well because crazy enough um there's a lot of research out there explaining how the digestive tract coincides with mental health um so yeah may maybe that's something you guys can think about as well looking into how what we consume food wise actually affects us mentally um, and it's, it's it's real. It's a big thing. Look it up if you don't believe me. Um, and I will be doing another video just discussing all that sort of stuff. So this is part one, I guess, of the vegan journey for me. Um, part two will be covering mental health and that sort of stuff. And also mental health after a surgery, after operation, after something that's life threatening. Um, it might not be as traumatic as what some people go through. But it's still a process that us humans, you know, experience. And we should be able to talk about. So this is a platform for me to kind of express it. And if someone else goes through that, then I want them to know that, you know, they're not alone. And yeah, 
one big family we can all go through this sort of stuff if you guys want to know more about um vegan nutrition and transitioning and that sort of stuff don't be afraid to holler at me don't be afraid to shoot me a message um again afikian fitness is, is here to help the people um it's to spread awareness on health and whatnot i'm practicing what i'm preaching so um yeah i hope i can help you guys out and don't be scared to shoot me a message don't be scared to, to ask for information um i am selling plans um i am doing training that sort of stuff so if you guys want to get involved i'm here um i'm cam from a in fitness i hope you enjoyed it um look for part two but i'll be seeing you guys soon peace